Friday. Welcome uh, to the latest episode of Galloping Private Radio. I am your host, Davey Beauchamp, and my co-host, Clayton Wick. Yeah, that was to the left of me, because there's no way to the right of me tonight. Um, we're finally getting back to uh, Torchwood, Torchwood Miracle Day, and we're, take, we're on part five um, of the, the story. Uh, so what, we'll start off by, what, what did we like about this episode? Um, I mean, pretty much the whole time, I think that Bill Pullman has just really been pretty great. Yeah. He, he's never really disappointed. Oh, no. I mean, I, he was, he, he's a great addition to the cast. Yeah. Um, he does an incredible performance. Um, when he was doing the big speech in this one, all I could think of was his speech from Independence Day. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right before he, uh, uh, right before they take the, uh, jets after the, uh, main space station. I mean, that's all I could think of. I mean, just that. He could deliver a speech mm -hmm. like no one else's business. Um, anything else? Um, uh, I mean, John Barrowman was, was good, but... Oh, he had a very small he, role in this one. I mean, this was a very uh, Barrowman light episode. Oh, yeah, but his performance was good. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm curious about how much of Jack is Jack and how much of Jack is Barrowman now. Yeah. Because it just seems, it, it almost seems like when, you know, David Tennant's playing the Doctor, how much of that's actually David Tennant and how much of that's actually the Doctor. And I think that's kind of like the same thing with, uh with uh Barrowman now. Yeah, I think with Jack. I think he's played the character long enough that there isn't as much of a separation as there used to be. <laughs> and I don't think that's bad. Well, it's true cuz I mean, I hate to say it, the one thing that has bothered me with Jack um since almost not since well, since this uh miniseries is they tend to forget that Jack's supposed to be omnisexual, but they are making him homosexual. Yeah, but I mean, and I miss that. I miss that in, in his character. And but it, what I'm saying is, is because I mean, John Berman is, is homosexual. I it just it leaves heavily on that side now, more so than than in Doctor Who and in the first season of Torchwood. Yeah, but Rex is really the only one available for him to hit on. Well, there's uh, the blonde Esther. That doesn't really work, though. He. <laughs> He's in too much of a mentor role to her. I think that he'd actually feel dirty pursuing anything there. <laughs> I don't see that at all. Well, I mean, no, he's, he's practically treating her like a daughter. At least... Oh, wait, you didn't see Children of, Children of Earth. He did something really bad to to what we were supposed to take, I, I believe, as his daughter in that. Oh, Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, you know, and plus, you know, the, the one chance he does have to go out and have meaningless sex, you know, straight to the gay bar. He happened by a gay bar. Uh, I don't know. I just, that's just, that's just one thing that's bothered me um, with this. It's just he's overly gay. Whereas before, he was omnisexual, and, you know, he would hit on women as, as much as men. But there's a, there's a definitely a clear division now. Or he seems to be hitting on nothing but men now. Yeah, that, that's there, but he he does he isn't really pursuing anyone though. Really, the only time his sexuality comes up is when he's trying to make Rex uncomfortable. Yeah, and and one thing is is I mean I I have seen the whole thing so far, and I think I'm a little colored right now okay. to to everything. Um, and you'll see what I'm getting, what what I'm getting to um, in the next two episodes, because episode seven is I, is probably one of my favorite of the season. Oh, okay. Um, and we're almost there. Okay, so what didn't we like about this episode? It's another Jane Espenson episode, and I think that she's great from her work on all of the Whedon stuff and on Battlestar Galactica and on Caprica, but. I, it's probably more the plot outline than anything that's specifically her doing, but it just felt like this whole episode was sort of on autopilot. Everything just sort of happened in an orderly fashion. 
in ways that it had to in order to move the plot forward. Yeah. There were no big surprises. No. And everything... But there were so many, like, obvious plot beats that were presented as if they were supposed to be b big plot twists. Yeah. The, the module, what it does... I could have told you that when they first said Overflow Camp. Yeah. It was too obvious. I, I agree. They, they could have gone in any other direction with that. And yeah. I mean, I even predicted that the module that the modules would burn the patients. Yeah. Because it... I, I hate to say it, but it's, it's just one of those really obvious writer choices where, you know, if you want to go, hey, guess what, guys? Our bad guys are like Nazis. This is how you do it. Yeah. It's the most obvious way you could. And I think that sort of let things down. It's just nothing is surprising at any point in the episode. The closest thing that came to a surprise was killing off Vera, but that... I think That's to me, it. to me that was shocking. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. I was expecting her to take a bigger role towards the end. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew that they were going to do something to the uh, right is dead people. I wasn't sure if it was going to be um, fire, acid, you know, something to dispose of them. Right. Um, and it, had, it would have to be something that would totally destroy them, which would have to be fire and acid or something like that. But yeah, that that was no big surprise there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was an episode that just carried the plot forward. Um, and I, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with that, except that there were a couple of earlier episodes that did serve that role, but they still at least managed to incorporate, like, interesting character interplay, or there was some thing that happened in the plot involving a minor character where there was some sort of unresolved tension. There were there were minor surprising things sprinkled throughout the plot, but I mean, did you really think that Danes is going to take Captain Jack up on his offer? Uh, I was kind of torn. I, I, could, I, I, I saw that going both ways, but... Did it surprise me the way it went? No. It would have surprised me more if he would have gone yeah, Jack's way. Yeah, exactly. It's just... But, you know, it's like from... You know, just like looking at the tool bag full of dumb writer tricks, it's just too early for him to actually do something like that. Well, no. they, you need to be further along in the plot before he can really make that turn and save the day, even though he's the bad guy. It... it it's too early for him to be able to do anything to the conspiracy. Well, we are at the halfway point. Right. Um, and I did feel that this episode did what it had to do, um, even though it didn't do it greatly. Um, like I like I had been saying all along, I didn't know how they were going to drag this on to ten episodes. Yeah. Um, now, the dialogue is great. I think that's really... I think that's really one of the uh, the writer uh, Jane Espenson's bigger strengths. I think yeah. she's really good with the dialogue. I think that that all came together really well. I mean, uh, like Dane's speech, it yeah. really comes across as somebody trying to be brilliant off the top of his head. Yeah, it, but also part of that's also the actor pulling it off. Oh yeah, but but it takes skill, I think, to be able to choose, like the third or fourth best choice of words for that speech yeah. because that's what you do when you're making something yeah. up off the top of your head. I'm curious if any of that speech was improvised or if it was verbatim. Parts of it, maybe. Well, I mean, he's so good with, you know, speeches, so, I mean, that's always one thing I've always wondered, especially when they're giving this huge monologue, you know, how much of that is it to a T, or if, or if any of it is sort of uh, improvised, they're like, this is, these are things we want you to touch in it, but how you get there, we don't care. Yeah. Because um, I know I've watched some behind-the-scenes stuff for other things where, you know, they have, like, ten different takes with, like, ten different variations on, on a speech like that. Um, it'd be, I, I really wish there was a confidential for Torchwood. Uh, I'm not one for like every episode in uh, 
in Miracle Day, but one sort of overall, just like behind the scenes, you know, this is why we did this, you know, here's some stuff. But uh, of course, there wasn't, so. Maybe on the DVD. I mean, on a, has a DVD of this come out yet? I just, I don't know. Pretty sure they're sitting on it right now. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, um, I, I hope there's something, because I mean, I'd, I'd really like to see the behind the scenes on this. Because it was a, an American and British uh, BBC uh, co-production. And I think it's worked really well. Um, so, where do you think the story... I, I know where the story's going. Where do you think the story's going? Well, if this episode's past performance is any indication, somebody somewhere in the production process really, really hates government employees. <laughs> so, I expect that to get played up a lot more. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th there was definitely. It felt like at times you've noticed this before. You've mentioned this a lot with some episodes of Doctor Who. How they get so political. Yeah. And oh my God, state-run healthcare. This was like a you know, we do not like the idea of state-run healthcare. Well, sort or of government-run healthcare. Except they mentioned that a lot of what's happening is happening to people because they're uninsured. So it almost comes across as an endorsement of free health care, and then the FICOR thing shows an indictment of for-profit health care. It's this really weird, confused well, see, message. I kind of saw, I, I kind of saw it where, you know, they, where they were, where, they, where the Vera was bitching about, you know, this is government-run health care, look how crappy it is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost like, you know, we have three different writers take on health care, and they're each saying why each one is horribly bad. But it's weird because it's all crammed into each episode. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, it almost makes me think that this might be done less in like the traditional sci-fi writer style and more in like the sitcom style where it's just sort of everyone at a round table pitching ideas for the episode and then they just sort of assign <laughs> writing credits on a rotating basis. I don't know if that's true, but it would explain some of the weird theme stuff that's going on. Uh, no, I think there was only like two or three writers on this, oh, on okay. the overall thing. Uh, Davies sort of plotted it and wrote some of it, and then the other lady you mentioned. Um, yes, Vincent. Yeah, and I think there might be one other. Um, yeah. But it, it was pretty. It was a pretty tight-knit group, from what I can tell. But of course, then, you know, you were also getting, you know, British with American, so, you know, there's no telling. they got to make it accessible in, in all the different ways. Um, trying to think. So is there anything else you want to say about this episode? Um, I'm curious to see what they do with this from here. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm excited because we're building into episode 7, which I really liked episode 7. I really liked episode eight, if, if I remember correctly, because one of my favorite actors appears in episode eight. Oh, uh, is that the one that has John Delancey in yes. it? Yes. I'm interested to see what they do with him. He he was amazing. I, I liked him a lot. Though he might appear in episode six, I can't remember, because it, it, it's been a while. But, I mean, I remember episode seven. That's one of my favorites uh, of this, uh, of... of, of the miniseries. But you can't go wrong with someone who's done Star Trek and My Little Pony. He's done My Little Pony? Yeah. Really? Yeah, he basically plays Q. Nice. Oh, and he, and he was also on Days Are Alive. So, I mean, I mean, he's sort of the trifecta. I, I would love to see him work with Christopher Walken, just because. Because <laughs> I think it would be just absolutely hilarious. So, um, I have nothing else to say. Like, like Clayton said, this is sort of like it was an autopilot episode getting us from point A to point B, and I think the big thing was to, the entire idea of the episode was to get that videotape made. Yeah. Uh, and that was the big thing. Um, and that's sort of where we're, where we're at. Um, yeah, well, it was like an hour's worth of time for a video. Um, and now uh, we get a, next, next episode we get to see what happens with said video. Um, which is obvious because he recorded it and it's not giving anything away. Um, 
and I'm pretty much out of anything more to say about this episode because it, it's pretty kind of dry. I mean, it's a pretty cut and dry episode. No big twists other than the doctor dying, which I was kind of like, Ugh. and I even I even felt bad watching it. Now I think it's the third or fourth time I've seen it, and uh -huh. it's just it's still. I mean, just I feel so bad for the character because I mean that one guy's such a douche. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I pretty much have nothing else to say about the episode, though we are building towards some of my favorite episodes and towards the ending, which I cannot wait to s discuss with Clayton, uh, how he feels about it versus how I feel about it, and just talk about how, I, how we feel about it in general, because it's, it's, it's an interesting ending. So do you have anything else you want to say about this episode? Uh, no, I'm good. Cool. So until uh, next time. Uh, and we're starting to get stuff back on track, uh, and we do we we are going to take a break in December where we do a special episode. Uh, I've decided that it's going to be a themed episode, uh, sometime of you know, it's going to be filmed the week uh, that has Thursday the fifteenth in it. So whatever that Sunday is, there's going to be a special themed episode. Uh, if all goes well. Okay. Yeah, I'm being mysterious. I, I'm teasing. I'm, I'm putting a plug in there. Cool. To get people's interest up, hopefully. Um, so until next time, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio, signing off.